Okay, that sounds. Is that any better? That's better. Test Thank one, you. Two. Test one, two. You hear me yes. all right? I can hear you better now. Sounds good. Can you guys hear okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I can put okay. up here. Well, Is this better? Is this any better? That is a lot better. Okay. Yes. Oh, thank you. Is that, is that pretty good? So we are now live streaming on um, Facebook Live. My name is Janice Stewart with TJC2, Columbus, Ohio, and Faith Hope Love House of Prayer. Pastor Priscilla Juan, we welcome you all to our monthly relational restoration gathering. And so we're excited to have you with us today. We have with us, we're honored to have Pastor David Lazarus with us from Israel. He will be our speaker today. But before we get started, we want to ask Yi Ching Tang, who is the Assistant Coordinator for TJC2 Columbus, to open us with prayer. And then we'll move right into a song of worship. And then we'll introduce Pastor David, and he will take it from there. Yi Ching, would you open us in prayer, please? OK. God the Father, we thank you for setting this time apart for us so we can get together in the air. God the Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you for cleansing us with your blood so we can come to you. God the Spirit, we thank you. You stay within us and among us to join and lead us with your shalom, with your peace. We thank you, God, to bless us with today's presentation of Pastor David Lazarus from Israel. We ask you to bless Pastor Lazarus, to bless all his families and his services, and let his word to refresh our mind, to change our perspectives in our learning to live, to restore to be the new and the united one, in our Lord Messiah, so the world can know how great you are and, and acknowledge that you are the Most High and you, our Lord, also become their heart's desire. We humbly present the following time to you, God, please protect our communication through internet with no interruptions. The prayer is in the name of our Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And we will now have a worship song. Pastor Juan will put that up for us. And uh, this song is just a dedication to Israel as we are seeking Adonai and praying to him for Aliyah, that he's bringing his people back into the Oh God, from the four corners of the earth, 
Thank you so much, Pastor Juan, for showing that. And yes, we do want to continue to always keep the Israel in prayer and those making Aliyah as Adonai is returning his people to the land. So we're excited today to have Pastor David Lazarus with us. Pastor David Lazarus is an Israeli messian messianic pioneer, and you'll hear about that. He is also a journalist and editor for the Israel Today, which is a Jerusalem-based news agency that is in Jerusalem. Uh, it's a based Zionist news agency. He founded it, it was founded in 1978. And the purpose is to bring a biblical dimension to journalism on Israel, the Middle East, and the Jewish world. And I found a really awesome quote um, by Pastor David Lazarus on that site. And he states, the one thing that holds us, speaking of Israel and the people there at the Israel Today, holds us together is that Israel Today is an unabashedly Zionist news agency. All of us, Jew or Arab, religious or secular, we all love the nation of Israel that we serve together with our families. We hope that this is reflected in our reporting, especially when we are critical or of Israel or don't shy away from reporting on the problems and challenges that face this great nation. Pastor David Lazarus stated that in a message he wrote to his readers called a heartfelt message to our readers June 23rd, 2021. So Pastor David, welcome. And we just want to give you the opportunity to share with us today. Um, our topic today of discussion is the future of Messianic movement in Israel and the current progress in Israel in restoring relational restoration between the Messianic Jewish movement and the different streams and organizations within the non-Messianic Jewish movements within the land of Israel. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
appreciate your kind words. Uh, it's nice to meet all of you. Um, and I, I have a pretty good idea of who Troy's Jerusalem Council too is. I was involved in it many years ago, 35 years ago, probably 30, 30 years ago with some of the founders. And um, so I've been aware, I've been involved, I've been connected with people from, from the movement. In fact, traveled, uh, I think it was with uh, Dan Juster and someone else uh, to uh, Kenya. And we did a conference there, uh, TCJ, TCJ2 conference. Um, anyway, I'd like to just, I'd like to speak to you about what's been on my heart. I was so, this song, uh, there was a verse in this song that said, uh, we'll praise him in the land. And there's something so special. Well, it's not special. There's something extraordinary about us living in this land because this is, this land and this people and us being here is different than anything that has ever happened in the history of, of mankind. And that is that this people, our people have a unique relationship with God. I like to call it a, a relationship of, of a divine dialogue. God speaks to Israel as a nation. There is no other nation that experiences that. God speaks to Israel as a nation, Israel speaks back and there's a dialogue going on between a nation not just individuals. I want you to think about it. in a nation. I mean, the history of Israel becomes the Bible, the stories, the struggles, the dialogues, the questions, the answers. And as they go through history and experience what a nation experiences in the world, this is, of course, back in Bible times, some thousands of years ago. And it gets written down, and their history becomes the Bible. It's just the story of God dealing with this people. And what's extraordinary about it, my friends, is that we are back in the land again. Now, let me point out, this dialogue only happened when Israel was in the land. When Israel was exiled, ultimately, and after the Messiah and for 2,000 years now, we lost the sense, we actually lost the ability to have a national dialogue with God. And that is why the Talmud really kind of distanced itself and Judaism from the Bible because the history was written, the story was told. And now we tell the stories about the stories and we analyze the history. But because we were not a nation united and in this land as a nation, as a sovereign nation, as the people of Israel in our land, we didn't experience God in a national dialogue. And this is something that the Messiah, Yeshua, initiated in a way. He brought our Torah to the nation. And they didn't have as a nation a unique relationship with God, so they understood the gospel to be an individual experience. The gospel is for each and every one of us, that you may be saved. And that's wonderful, thank God. But Israel has a unique place in divine history and history of the world. Something that has not happened to any other. And in fact, it's fascinating to think about the fact that our history, the history of Israel is sacred. It was written down. And it becomes God's word, the sacred history. We have holidays about things that happen to us, and they become sacred. They became 
they become holy days. And, 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 and no other day, and, and what's fascinating is, what's interesting is that, that the, in the Western world and in Christian nations all around the world, their sacred history becomes our history, Israel's history. <laughs> For them, their sacred history is our history. It's our story. And some of them celebrate our holidays. I mean, even the Christian holidays, they happened in Israel. They had to happen in this land for it to become sacred history, for it to express something of the dialogue of God to mankind through a nation. And it's different, different than an individual. It's a different way of thinking. We don't think this way. Christians really for 2,000 years have not thought this way. Maybe you know, now we like, many of us can say, yes, Israel is special and unique, but first of all, I, I want to say we have to read the Bible with that in mind. That was the goal of the Bible was to make Israel a light to the nations and to learn from the story of God's dealings, God's dialogue. I say dialogue because it's back and forth, right? He didn't just give us the Torah. We gave him plenty to think about, too. And so I think you understand what I'm saying, but we have to, this should challenge our thinking. First of all, this should challenge our thinking about Israel. I mean, we have to understand that this is something special that's going on here. I would say, and I think I wrote about this in an article that we could and we should and we may be writing, I call it a revised version of the Bible. Okay. Israel's back in the land. God is dialoguing with her as his people, his nation. It's the third time this has happened in history. The people have settled in the land gone to exile, came back, second temple was destroyed, and now we're here. So, this is important to me and why I'm telling you this, when I think about the Messianic Jewish movement in Israel, I don't think we get this. We don't get this. We don't talk about this. Because If I may suggest, Israel was called to be a light to the nation, Israel, the nation of Israel, as a nation. I want to understand something. Something happens when a nation becomes one nation under God, when that actually happens. People have spoken those words or thought about it, but the only place in the world and in history that's ever happened is here where I'm sitting. And I mean, first of all, we have to understand that that doesn't end. You know, Israel is still called to be. And that is worked out in the nitty gritty, every day, hands in the dirt, sweat on the back, life of a nation. We have to deal with armies and economies and politics is part of it. There's plenty of politics in the Bible, for goodness sake. And we have to learn how to live together as a nation because it's about living together as a nation. This is what, it, I mean, we're, our, we're our, we're going to live together in some sort of a kingdom. Back then, they didn't have nations, so it was called the kingdom. They're just very called it God's nation. And there has to be a ruler, and there has to be leadership, and there has to be justice, and rules, and so forth and so on. That doesn't change in the kingdom of God. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to live together. It's not easy. 
And Israel is here to show the world how it's done, how it's done. It's done with a lot of problems and a lot of mistakes. And it's done with a lot of sweat, blood, and tears. And this is the this is the reality as I see it. This is actually what's happening in the world today. <sighs> but I want to say as to your topic here that I fear that Messianic Jews and Messianic Judaism have missed this. Our connection is much stronger to the church than it is to Israel. And whether we think we believe in, how do you call it, replacement theology or not, if at the end of the day the church becomes the light to the nations and not Israel, well, that's replacement. I'm just saying. And it, the uncomfortable truth is that Messianic Judaism and Messianic Jews have not taken a hold of that and bound themselves to Israel in the way that I'm talking about. So that we become a part of that dialogue, national dialogue, not our own personal talking to God or even corporate prayer, or however we think about it. That is far from what God wants from humanity and where we are going. And how will we live together, all the nations, if we don't know how to live together as a nation? And of course, the modern world has made this very difficult. The philosophical perspective of what it means to be alive today and who we are and where we're going and what's happening in the nations is, is sad. And It's also sad to me that, you know, I'm telling you all this, but this is, to be honest with you, this is my message to the Messianic Jews here in Israel. But, you know, they, they, don't in, they don't invite me too much more to speak because I really believe something needs to change. Uh, I love all you guys. I've traveled around the world. I mean, I came from a place from being afraid to enter into a church. I, I thought that they, my, my, the picture I had of Christianity was a sword with Jewish blood on the top. And, you know, over here, that's the picture we have. It's crusaders and, and all these people and, and, and you know, and, and you know you know all that, I'm sure. You've heard it a, a thousand times. But I just want to say, you know, I ended up, you know, being a leader in, in reconciliation movements, um, whether it was towards Jerusalem Council, or Arab and Jewish, German and Jewish. So I understand where you're coming from. Believe me, I do. So I'm saying, I'm sharing this with you because no one else will listen to me. <laughs> no, not really, because this is the way I see the world and the way I see Israel. And we have got to reintroduce Yeshua to our people, of course. But the only way we're really going to have any kind of success in doing that is by attaching ourselves in a more profound way 
and investing in getting our hands dirty and sweating and bleeding and crying with our people and see if we can't give some guidance somewhere, somehow, and some, you know, what we have learned from our relationship with God through the Messiah with our people and help us corporately become a light to the nations. You know, they talk about light and we think about it's only the good things, but maybe the light just shines on everything and then you just kind of see where you're at. You know, you really understand what's going on. And if you, any of you follow Israel, you know, you have a good idea about how hard it is. And uh, I don't want to get into all that, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Um, and I think, you know, this, I think this really has implications for towards Jerusalem Council too, if I may. I am certainly not. I have been involved in a while. I know all the people very, very well. We had some incredible meetings. Wow, really life-changing stuff that went on at the beginning of this movement. Um, for me, I think for everyone. Um, and uh, but still, I think it's important to understand what I'm saying that I mean, I'll say it like this, you know. We don't need reconciliation anymore, you and me. We, we've been working on that for 40 years. And we've had so many meetings. And, and it's become easy. It's just very easy, you know. We like each other. We can have nice meetings. And, and we're very nice and all that. But that's not what needs to happen. What needs to happen is Israel needs to find its place in this world. I'm talking in a divine sense, in God, and live it out. And you might be surprised to hear that there are hundreds of thousands of Jewish Israelis who believe this. I mean, basically what I'm preaching to you to, in the modern world, we call religious Zionism. That's what it is. In other words, we believe that we are supposed to be here. We have a divine calling to be the, a light to the nation. And we have to figure that out. And this national religious movement has trouble in Israel in the political realm as well because they don't buy in to the Judaism that was written in exile in the diaspora. That Judaism, while we have tons to learn from, I mean, I love to read the rabbinics and, and the great rabbis, absolutely love. I mean, I have learned more from them than my Christian seminary education um, about God and about the Bible and reading the Bible. And I'm sure many of you may have experienced that, but so, so they understand, the religious Zionists understand. Bennett comes from that movement whatever you may think of him, it doesn't really matter right now. He's, he comes from that movement and they, that's what they, and so they're settling the land in God's name. And they also understand that they have to write a new halakha, if you know what that is, or revise the halakha. And they are not uh, opposed or antagonistic like the Messianics are. The Messianics are antagonistic towards halakha and towards Jewish tradition. 
I'm just telling you, I've been, I've been around here for 40 years. And, uh, I came to faith in Israel. I was living in the Sinai Desert. I came to faith in the 1970s. And I thought everything was great. You know, we were all happy. We all loved each other. You know, I found it changed my life. And but as time went on, I began to realize that this the, the Jews who believed in Jesus were much more interested in Christianity than in Judaism. Much more. Oh, they, they only read Christian books over here in Israel, translated into Hebrew. And they go to Christian schools and, and things like that. And, you know, it's good for them. It's great, but that misses the whole point. And, and I will tell you that the young generation of Israel is going even further in that direction. There's a lot of attraction by the Christian church, a lot of support, a lot of finances. And it's attractive. The music is attractive, the culture is attractive. And their Jewishness and their calling, destiny to be a part of this people is neglected, greatly neglected, if not ignored. And that's disturbing to me. If I'm not mistaken, I'm speaking to a group here. You all would know Jason Silverman, is that correct? Yes, we we do. We we really we really impressed with Jason and the work yeah. that he's doing. Yes. Yeah. So to my mind, just so that you understand, to my mind, he's a great example of what's supposed to be happening. He's more interested in Israel and in getting involved and in getting his feet on the ground and doing something to help move this nation in the right direction. He's more involved and more interested in that than building a messianic congregation. I mean, we're supposed to go to synagogue to pray and then go to do our work. And it got turned around somehow. And somehow that became more important than what we do with our lives in the world. So he, and he goes to synagogue, he goes to Messianic Congress. He tries to touch all the bases, but his main burden and heart is to help move this nation forward in a more kind and just and godly way so that we can be what God has called us to be because this is our home. We may be citizens of heaven, but for right now, <laughs> This is our home, it's right here, and I have to build it because this is God's land and people and something special is still happening here is what I'm trying to tell you. And it's gonna happen. So, and we're supposed to be, we're invited to be part of that, but we have all kinds of reasons why we're not at the table, but Anyway, that's my message for. So you, you know, I, I'm telling you all this. You do with all this what you like. I, you, this is all free. I'm not asking for any remuneration for this. But you can do with it what you want. But uh, I would imagine that this would have some implications for a movement uh, for TCJ2, uh, from my, you know, from what I understand. But that's not really what stirs me, you understand. I thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to to come where everyone where anyone will listen to me. But uh, uh, yes. <laughs> that's why I became a writer, you see, Janice. You it's much easier to just write to people than yes, talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> it is much easier to write than to talk. Well, you know, it's really powerful, Pastor Lazarus, because two things. Um, we all, Most of us, some of us on this call, uh, also, we pray with a group in Israel, Shakar, Don Yurik. I don't know if you know her or I not, don't. but we pray with her. And one of the things that we pray about is 
that the identity that Israel, the Jewish people will be able to embrace and understand her identity. And especially for the young sure. people, we have been really praying that. And when you mentioned that, that it need to be reinstated, that really gripped my heart. I wondered if, and if others have questions, you may do so as well. Yeah, please. Could you, could you elaborate more on um, the Messianic Jews, Jewish movement in Israel? You mentioned that they are a little antagonistic sometimes. Could you kind of give us a little bit more on that? Yeah, towards towards rabbinic Judaism. You see, what's basically, I'll tell you the truth, what's happened is, Messianic Jews here in Israel in the movement, the large majority, large majority, have swallowed whole fundamental evangelical Christianity. Just the theology, the mindset, the worldview. So their goal is to defend the fundamental faith. That's why Messianic Jews Israel, they don't like to get involved in towards Jerusalem Council too. They don't like the Catholics. They don't like the Orthodox. They don't like anybody, including me, who doesn't believe just like them. And let alone people who get involved in Judaism and in rabbinic studies, that's forbidden. That's dangerous. You're going to fall away from Christ. Uh, um, so they are antagonistic. I, I, that was a kind word. <laughs> they are defensive, aggressively. Yeah, and then it's different. I know in the United States, a lot of the Messianic Jews are very involved in rabbinic studies, and I really appreciate that about the movement over there. I can tell you one of the reasons is, in my mind, I grew up in Boston, right? And I know the Orthodox Jewish, we went to an Orthodox Jewish synagogue. I know what Orthodox, what, Amer what American Orthodox Judaism is. It's much more liberal and progressive and modernized than Orthodox Judaism in Israel. Orthodox Judaism is still looks like and feels like the shtetl, the, the old country. And they, it, they are keepers of the tradition and that's wonderful. That's an important role. I, I honor them for that. I'm not saying this in a negative way. I read there, they are the ones who teach us how to understand the Bible, if you've ever had any experience reading some of the great rabbis, uh, Orthodox Jewish rabbis, but in the land of Israel, you see, they didn't develop a halakha, a way of living that was appropriate to live in this land as a nation. They have a, a, a halakha of how to live in exile when you have no authority, you have no independence or sovereignty or nation, and you just have to survive as Jews. So you have to put a lot of emphasis on traditions and you have to, and they go on and on and on about, you know, the volumes about how to keep kosher. And that was just the result of, of the historical uh, situation. Um, and Messianic Jews see that, and they say, well, this doesn't have anything to do with, you know, what I've learned from Yeshua. It just seems odd. You know, we're either free from the law or we just have to be a Jew so that the Jews will believe in Jesus and will take from some sort of cultural identity as being Jewish. And basically, you know, thrown the baby out and left with, well, evangelical Christianity, really. And 
though it may be in Hebrew. And so, yeah, there's a lot of animosity towards Judaism. And that's really sad. Because, that is. That is really uh, sad. Yeah. Yeah, very, very sad. You know, it's really interesting, too. And if anyone has questions, please pop in. We have about 10, 10 more minutes. But I think it's interesting, too, um, Rabbi Lazarus, that the, the uh, Parsha for, for today, um, I know in Israel is Korak, but for us is, it was um, interesting that it talked about how your people did not trust God to enter into the land. And when you mentioned that you're there in the land and that you have the, your people have the responsibility to re re your identity, to be the nation and to be the light. I thought, how apropos was it that we even read that parsha today? And it's so heartbreaking that, like you just said, that the people that have embraced Yeshua are not able to connect their particularism with their calling in Yeshua. Right. It's just really. Yeah. Well, we, you know, we did it and I did it for many years, you know, by telling ourselves, and there is some truth to this that, you know, we have to be, you know, we want to bring the gospel to our people. I mean, we, we feel that deeply and that's important. Um, and many of us have felt also that we might have something to contribute to Christianity in terms of connecting with their Jewish roots, as it's called. Yes. Um, but those are all good things, but frankly, we're not, we haven't been very successful with that. I mean, in my mind, yeah. the great the great reclamation of Jesus for the Jewish people has not come from the Messianic Jews. That was going on long before we appeared on the scene. Scholars, mm. and Jewish scholars, and, and Christian as well. Um, and, you know, in Hebrew University and Christian schools around the world, you know, began teaching on the Jewishness of Jesus and have done an amazing job in in changing the attitudes of Jewish people towards Jesus. Um, it's really extraordinary and it's wonderful. And in terms of evangelism, you know, yeah, you would think that a Jew could, should be able, you know, we have the language, we have the cultural experience and so forth. But the fact remains that most of the Jews who believe in Jesus here in Israel came through Christian brothers and sisters. And, oh, I, I mean, see. The, the, greater, the greater majority of Messianic Jews in Israel, more than 70%, came from the former Soviet Union. Uh -huh. and most, almost all of them came from, if not from, from, you know, from Jewish families, sure, but with no understanding or appreciation of, of Jewish tradition. And so they become quickly absorbed into the messianic movement here, which, as I said, uh, can be antagonistic towards rabbinic Judaism. So oh, I see. Yeah. So it's becoming more and more like that as time goes on. But, um, Did you have a question, um, Iona? Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Um, I just found it very interesting that um, Pastor David, um, when he said that one nation under God, and he was referring to the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, the very last yeah. part of that pledge, which ends like uh, and justice for all and righteousness for all. It's like a slap in the face. I agree with him totally that, I mean, this is not, for this, this nation is not one nation under God, you know? That phrase is for the Jewish people. 
one nation under God is the same thing as saying one nation chosen by God, you know? And this nation was the Jewish people, the Israelites were, was the nation that was chosen by God to be a nation of priests and a light unto the world. You know, sure. not the United States of America. Sure, but let me let me interject that. In my understanding of history, Iona, the founders of the nation, they kind of saw it that way. And I think they wanted it to be that way. And I think 200 years of history have shown how difficult that is in the modern world. And that's why that's what's happening in Israel today is so unique because I only, if Israel can't make it, and this is, and this is not easy. Right. This is not something in the modern world. I mean, even today to get up on a public stage and said, and say, you know, as a, as an Israeli Jew fighting in the Israeli army, and I have Palestinian blood on my hands to say, you know, God called me to be here, right? You don't say that <laughs> in the public square today. You'll get crucified. <laughs> Think of a better word. You'll just get crucified. You just can't say that. It's not, you know, and it sounds ridiculous in the modern world. So our nation that is, you know, in, in, in many ways secular is really struggling. But I want to say that I believe, and this is not my, it was uh, Rabbi Cook, the first uh, national rabbi of Israel, who understood that both secular and religious are all a part of this experiment, if you will. In a way, maybe it is. I mean, what were we doing 40 years in the desert? This is an experiment. It's like, so let's see what's going to happen, you know. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, God is alive. He's, he may He may be sovereign and all that, but he's, you know, he's watching and waiting and looking and he's deciding, you know, what am I going to do with these people, you know? I mean, more times than not in the scripture, he can say, I can't stand them anymore. I just, might as well just destroy them. <laughs> There's no good. There's no use. But somehow, you know, Moses would convince him. Uh, yeah. And so anyway, look, I have appreciation for the United States of America is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I think we all understand now, I don't know how difficult that really is, what that really means in the modern world. And we're just not ready yet. Well, America's not ready, but Israel, we still have, there's something here that's deep within us and that's why Israel's not afraid, you know, to stand up to the whole world and say, you know, so what if everybody's wrong and I'm the only one who's right? So what? That's okay. That could be, you know. And other nations today, people are not willing to stand up and, and say that. Right. Yeah, that's interesting, uh, Pastor, because I remember I was listening to um, the Kumash and one of the guy that was uh, the rabbi that was doing that, he said, we have to remember that Israel, the Jewish people, is the only people, a called out people, that were called as a nation. And yeah, the only who everybody at the beginning believed and received Yod Bave. The only nation. There is no other nation. And yeah. that's what makes her so unique. The only nation that has a national dialogue with God, yeah, yeah, and has a sacred a history, Sac a sacred history. Yes, and it's, a, it's a privilege to be a part of it. You tell all your Jewish brothers and sisters over here to get over here. I don't know what they're doing out there in the diaspora. They're not going to really be able to help us from there. It's not where history is going to be written. Yes. Does someone else have a question before we leave? Pastor Juan, you have anything or any comments? Um, 
I'm just so intrigued by what you have to share here today. I, I feel like it's kind of like getting an inside scoop to a world that uh, we Gentiles haven't been privy to see the, the, the blessings, but the uh, struggles, struggle dynamics that are happening in the Messianic uh, Jewish movement. I had uh, two thoughts when, uh, or questions. Um, I, I don't know if, if you go by pastor um, as your title, but I was just curious as to well, why. Right now I'm, re I'm retired. I was leading a Messianic congregation in Jaffa for 35 years. Okay. And I retired a couple of years ago. Sure. So you just call me David. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. And I was just curious to, I know you gave Jason, I'm, I, I appreciate the example of Jason as a, um, what you would say is a well-adjusted um, messianic. And by the way, he married my daughter. So it's a special Oh, well, message. there's, there's that too. Guy of good taste. You guys know Jason is Rabbi Silverman's son, right? Yes. Yes. That's yeah. right for the connection here. Um, but yeah, that, I felt like that helped me to have a better picture of what you're envisioning a good integration or a good, because it sounds like the, the divorce of, of Messianic mm. Jewish people from the land is really what pains your heart. Um, and you want to see a restoration, but sometimes people from broken yes. families don't really know what a healthy family looks like, you know? And so, uh, you know, beyond, you know, Jason, are there other examples or yes. kind of a vision that you have? Like, what is it? Yeah, like? of course, of trip? course. I do feel like John the Baptist, you know, but of course there are others, you know, cr crying in the wilderness, but yeah, yeah, no. There are, absolutely, there are. It's just, uh, there's quite few and far between. Yeah. Uh, 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 but an interesting thing has happened in that regard. I appreciate your perspective on this. The young, young people, like our children, all of our children, my children, they, they understood, they don't want to get involved in in ministry, you see, a lot of the young people who get involved in ministry, they work for God TV or, I don't know, ICJU or they have all these organizations, Christian organizations that they work for, a lot of the young messianics here. And they get disconnected from the people like we do when we, very often, Christians too. We have this thing, one of my professors used to call it redemption and lift. And you kind of get lifted up, <laughs> right up out of the picture, you know, and you're just not involved anymore in the community, really. You're involved in the church. So, but the young people, the, the generation, my kids, and I'll be a grand, my grandchildren, they understood that. They want to build their life here in Israel. And they went and they got educations here and they became professors and technicians and plumbers and engineers and doctors and politicians even uh you know getting involved so that's a very helpful thing and they carry their faith but they don't carry it in the same way that we did in our movement here when we began our congregations you know the congregation is important to them but it's not the most important to them for us like this is the most important thing you know Tell everybody about Jesus and build uh, local communities, plant churches, plant messianic congregations. And uh, these kids, uh, they want to be involved in, the, in building the land. So that's very encouraging. And, and they have, they have a, a strong faith, but they don't have a religious expression to it as much as yeah. you would imagine. That's really good. Yes, I think we have maybe one more. Dr. Judith, did you have maybe a short question? Yes, please. Thank you the so much. The questions are short. The problem is the answers are so long. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you for the chance to ask my question. Uh, from the word go, Israel was the one, was the classroom, or was the, the People, the nation that was supposed to introduce Adonai to the whole world, because uh, we, we as Gentiles, we didn't know a God. We were not the people, the chosen people. 
what happened? Where, when, where, where did they lose it? And how comes now it is us Christians who are now supposed to, to introduce to the Israelites their, their God? Where, where did they lose it from? And will, 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 the, will the Gentile nations really succeed in really introducing to the Israelites their God? Because it was supposed to be the God of Israel, not and they were the chosen people are not the, the, the gentile the gentile um, messiah or the gentile god thank you so much i think what i'm saying uh judith is that he still is their god that he hasn't left them that, that hasn't changed right there's still and jesus fulfilled in an amazing way bringing the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and monotheism to the world, right? Jesus, uh, in a way, represents Israel. And he brought the light to all the nations in that way. But what we need to remember is, and then, and Israel was scattered through the nations, right? They were exiled. And for 2000 years now, uh, so, and so now we are back and now something special is happening again. Israel is once again, I mean, on the lips of everyone, it, Israel is, is the center of, everything that goes on in the world. Almost nothing happens in the world today that Israel doesn't have some part in it or some, some Jewish person is involved in it, whether, you know, for good and for bad, right? We're either blamed for everything or praised for many things, but somehow Israel is always part of our news today. And what I'm saying is, Something special is happening there that we need to recognize. God and Israel are back at the table and we're having a national dialogue, a dialogue between a unique people as a people, not just individual Christians, but as a people. And in that dialogue, something very special is happening. And we need to know how to look at it and to begin to think about this. What does it mean to be a people of God, a na one nation under God? What does that look like? How, how can that work? And we have promises that God is going to help us make it work. But I would leave this with you, if I may, one final thought. What you could do, you see, I think in terms of this, I think, what is God saying to us as a nation? And what are we as a nation saying to God? What is that? What are we saying to each other as a nation? And this is by our actions, by the choices that we make by of, as a nation, by the by the ethical codes by which we live and how we live. They speak to God. God sees and, and hears our response to him and to his word. And he speaks back to us through history, mostly, mostly through history. That's how Jews understand the world, right? When the temple was destroyed, it was our fault because we had sinat achim. We were not united. We hated one another. There was too much division amongst us. So God intervened, right? Stuff happens in history. And now we're back. So my challenge to you is, Think about what is God saying to Christianity today as a people? And what are you saying? What is Christianity saying to God by its actions, by its deeds, by the things that are important to it? This, this, I challenge you to begin thinking in that way because really that's, that's how God thinks. Of course, God teaches us, talks to us as individuals. 
but we have put so much in, emphasis on the individual in evangelical Christianity that we lost sight of the idea that God speaks to nations. And like I said, the only nation that's really trying to listen is Israel. No one even has else has a language for that. No one else talks about that. We talk about that in Israel. We still have national, you know, I mean, meaningful national prayer events, for example, here in Israel, when something happens. It's not like in America, it's, it's much different there than prayer breakfast. It's not, it's not the same. Here the whole nation comes together. Everybody, you know, can fast. Or anyway, I, I, so I just, you know, learn to think in that way. You, you will see, uh, you, you'll be a better disciple of Yeshua if you think about how your nation or your people or Christianity or Israel, when you think about Israel too, how can we really help Israel if we see it through this, through what's really going on here. And God has come back to the table and is sitting with us. And he is, you know, he is speaking to us again as a nation and asking us some serious questions. And it's our responsibility to help in some way, come back to the table with a, you know, with the best answer that we can at this point. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we're going to ask Pastor Juan if she would pray for Pastor Lazarus. And then Travis Ziegler is going to close us in prayer. And we thank you for that uh, last point you made, Pastor David, that we will hide that in our hearts and make that a part of our, our thinking. Pastor Juan. Yeah, uh, Yeshua, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for um, Pastor David's uh, sharing today, just how he shared from his heart. Uh, thank you for the uh, many decades that he's been able to spend in the land. And thank you for just your relationship with him and that he gets to carry uh, a part of that burden that you carry um, for uh, the nation to be a light. God, we just ask that he would even just uh, see tremendous growth in that area, even amongst the young people, um, all the, the new Messianic believers coming into faith, that you um, would heal the land and by healing the hearts of the people, reuniting uh, the people of Israel to the land. Father, we just ask that, um, that there would be a right order in the uh, the desire of, of being a light to the nations, um, but also um, just a, a pride in um, your history with them, God. I just yes. thank you um, for uh, just restoring um, just your people in both mentally and physically in the right place. You know that you're doing a healing work and we bless that. And uh, just thank you for TJC too. Thank you for Janice. Thank you for the people here who, where we just give you permission to mold and to make our hearts more like you in our thinking and in our, our being, God. Um, give us a greater heart for your people, for your land. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Amen, Lord. Thank you for uh, David's really unique perspective. <laughs> well, it's a... Uh, his life has been crafted by you to be able to say the things he says with the weight that, that the words carry. And we thank you for being, uh, for challenging us today as the church, uh, as believers, as a nation, and uh, to look at things a little bit differently. Lord, what kind of conversation are we having with you? And are we generating a conversation amongst our communities and in our nation that's worthy of uh, you listening? And are we listening to you, to what you're saying? Father, we just, we thank you for Israel. We thank you for those national conversations and events, especially going right now uh, with what's going on politically there. We just pray that your hand will be upon the leadership and upon the whole nation, that the hearts of uh, those in Israel will turn to God and uh, cry out for help, Father, from you. We thank you that you're very faithful and you have a plan. 
uh, that is going forth. And Lord, we pray that your hand would be working in, um, in multiple lives, Lord God, and that humility will come uh, amongst their leadership. We also pray in America that we could generate that conversation and come humbly to you, Lord God, united under God, one nation under God. We, we do want to be that nation. And Father, have mercy upon us, Lord God. Help us to see with wider eyes, Lord God, what uh, is going on in our nation and to realize how desperate we are for you. Uh, we do thank you, Father, for the, the love uh, for, the, for Yeshua that, that David shares. And it comes across in his, uh, his earnest desire to see um, people know and love you in truth and, and in the spirit, Lord God. We just pray that you will uh, continue to allow his voice, Lord God, to stir up the hearts of your believers everywhere, Lord God, and that you will uh, bless his family, uh, his grandchildren, as he spoke of, Father, all the uh, all the ones that are dear to his heart. We thank you for his time today with us, and we pray we go in, uh, in encouragement that the Spirit of the Lord is guiding us and, uh, and helping us, convicting us, and showing us the way, redeeming us so we can be a light and salt upon this earth. Lord, in the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor you. Lazarus. We were honored to have you, and we look forward to coming to the land ourselves soon. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us today, Facebook audience, as well as you that are with us. And with that, we say shalom, shalom. May the peace of, uh, may shalom be over Israel as we leave. Amen. See you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, Bye.